Say I'll do this with you, that being what? Whatever you want to do. This Again, it's your show, Doc. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Dr. Phil got owned by his guests. Is that not what happened? I got a yes, rewind that, that, button, that, no, and we that, can that, damn sure play it back. I don't ignore anything you say, Dr. Is Phil. Is that not That's rude? That's why I'm here. Is that not rude? Maybe. You were nothing before I came on this show. Thank you for that. No problem. For this list, while the TV therapist is used to being in control, we'll be looking at the times when his guests got the upper hand. Which Dr. Phil moment did you find the most eyebrow raising? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Zero Chill. Dr. Phil is a show that tackles a lot of sensitive topics. It's normal to see tensions running high on the set, but things can really get heated when someone comes on camera determined to argue. Let me please okay, have an intelligent conversation without you two bickering back and forth. With the touchy subject of kids in the mix, Phil's guests were more interested in sniping at each other than working out their differences. And I am in the middle of what I think is a pretty intelligent and fact-based conversation with her about stopping that, and you want to interrupt me so you can engage with her. The host's exasperation is clear in his body language. However, he finally reaches his breaking point and lets loose with uncharacteristic sharpness. You know, my dad used to tell me, never pass up a good chance to shut up. Phil pretty decisively takes back the reins here, but the fact that he was frustrated enough to lose his cool, even for a second, qualifies this as a minor own for his combative visitors. Number 9. The Sexy Vegan It was just a typical day on set as Dr. Phil talked to Susan about her son's troubling behavior. That is, until the son himself made an appearance. I am the beautiful vegan messiah. The man who called himself the sexy vegan crashed the interview to dispute his mother's version of events, leaving everyone in the studio temporarily stunned. It was when he challenged Phil directly that the host tried to regain some control of the situation. I got 9.9 out of 10 after 327 women rated me. Let's see your talent. Let's see your talent, you ugly piece of Okay, stop. The sexy vegan was obviously not interested in a dialogue, though. Eventually, it became clear that nothing constructive would come out of his chaotic appearance. I'm gonna have to do Okay, take okay. him out. Security, get him out of here. However brief it was, the sexy vegan's cameo completely derailed the show and left Phil looking visibly annoyed. Number eight, casual confessions. One of the most disturbing guests to have appeared on Dr. Phil has got to be a man named John, who was there to discuss his cannibal fantasies and violent behavior. It's an uncomfortable subject, and members of the audience seem visibly squeamish during the segment. Most unsettling is John's very casual demeanor throughout. You don't seem to be remorseful about it. You uh, talk I'm, about it in a very matter-of-fact way. I think I'm more sociopathic than I like to admit, to be honest with you. Phil keeps plowing on through questions, trying to find an angle where he can make the topic more approachable, if that's even possible. John isn't any help, though. He remains completely unaffected, in contrast to everyone around him. It's, it's amusing to me, and you know, I have a very uh, morbid sense of humor, clearly. Though Phil tries to go about business as usual, John is the one steering the mood of this moment. Number 7. A Flash of Aggression It's not really clear why Thomas agreed to come on Dr. Phil in the first place. The habitual flasher is hostile at Phil's attempts to talk about his issue before he reveals that he doesn't even believe Phil can help. But you've never overcome uh, exhibitionism, so what would you know about it? The host argues back, but Thomas holds his ground. We're not sure if he was right, but his argument wasn't exactly a bad one. This is a behavior that unless you have experienced the humiliation of this behavior, you couldn't possibly know what it's like. Though a flustered Phil quickly throws to a commercial, that wasn't the end of the story. As cameras kept rolling during the break, the confrontation between the two men continued to heat up. Despite Phil's efforts to curb the tension, Thomas decided he'd had enough leaving the doctor to admit defeat. Number 6. Nicholas Brendan Confronting addiction and mental health is difficult for anyone, but it's much harder for someone doing so in the public eye. Nevertheless, Nicholas Brendan seemed prepared to be candid about his struggles when he appeared on Dr. Phil. It's not horrible, you know? I'm sorry? I'm, I'm tackling it. I'm, you know, I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah? You know? You're not ashamed of what? Of why I'm here. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah, I'm talking about it. The former Buffy actor's demeanor noticeably shifted when Phil abruptly dove into the details of his difficulties. Um, what, what else did you want to talk about? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? It's your show. In a later interview with the LA Times, Brendan would say that he felt Phil's confrontational style, quote, went for the jugular, and he was not about to simply accept it. I'm not here to kind of have people laugh at my life. People aren't gonna laugh at my life, Doc. It's not, I'm not gonna do this, you know? He attempted to counter Phil's points even as he became more upset. 
However, when the host revealed he'd been monitoring Brendan's drinking, the actor pulled the plug. I got a report last night that said that um, you were at a bar last night. We're done. I'm not doing this. The interview ended on his own terms, with Phil left behind to watch. Number five, in-laws out of line. We all know the cardinal rule, never get between a parent and their child. I am mama bear, okay? My son and his welfare comes first. When a man's mother and sister appeared on Dr. Phil with concerns about his toxic relationship, the host pointed out that the man in question seemed a little old for them to be meddling in his love life. The two women had very strong feelings about his fiance, though. It wasn't long before just the thought of her was bringing up violent impulses. Phil moved in to quell the situation, but Mama Bear made it plain that his influence had limits. Okay, I respect you, but I respect my cubs even more. Could you please? My babies. I respect my babies, okay? Despite not having an answer to that, Phil continued to do his best to calm everyone down. Of course, all bets were off when the fiancé herself appeared. Who the f*** do you think you are? No, whoa, 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 whoa. Number four, DMX. The late rapper had quite an eventful life both on and off the stage. When he sat down to talk about the highs and lows on Dr. Phil, he brought a refreshingly direct perspective on his past troubles. Seems like you've been arrested 25 times for nothing. No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. You have been guilty of something. Of course, I've been guilty of a lot of things. The easy mood took a slight shift when the host brought up DMX's children. Namely, how many he had and how far behind the performer was in his child support payments. It seems hugely illogical okay. to have 12 children with six different women. DMX would explain that it was as a result of his reduced income, leading Phil to ask why that would be the case. I don't know. Well, if you did know, what would it be? It's kind of a weird question. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> I still don't know. Like, if I did know, what would it be? We applaud DMX's smooth handling of this odd question, keeping his cool, but calling it out all the same. Phil might say he isn't a gotcha interviewer, but he seemed to be fishing here. Number three, monster-in-law. Fighting in-laws was nothing new on Dr. Phil. However, Kalud, living with a son-in-law she hated, was stretched to the end of her rope. All her frustration came out on air when Phil did not seem to be taking her seriously. Anybody that stays as 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 animated and and uptight and I'm not uptight and I just agitated and you're not even living in my shoes are you kidding me and seriously Phil became agitated in return calling her out for her habit of ignoring him not that Kalud was bothered by that it's rare to see Phil so completely unable to rein in one of his guests I'm not going to tell them anything I am uh, talking to you of speech. and it is rude for you to just turn away oh, well. and ignore what I'm saying to you Kalud isn't the least bit intimidated by the celebrity therapist her raging dislike for her son-in-law is the only justification she needs. Is that not rude? Maybe. Okay, then don't do that. I can't help it. <laughs> if he that's opens his I'm, mouth, I have to say that's something. Why I'm Number two, Phil versus Phil. We can only imagine what Dr. Phil thought when the creator of a trashy show called Bum Fights showed up to his set in full Dr. Phil cosplay. He did, however, have a strong opinion on the guy's professional choices. I don't want to talk to you. Why not? That's despicable. Undeterred, the faux Phil had his own critique to offer. If you, if you think I exploit people, every time you bring a guest on this show, you exploit them and spread whatever problems they have to the whole world. You think that's helping them? We're not saying that the man who made a show about homeless people fighting is any kind of hero, but we can't deny that he has a point. The debate ended abruptly after that, though. Phil has his doppelganger escorted off set and carried on with the show. Good point or not, it should be obvious to anyone that this guy was way more interested in controversy than principles. He clearly could not have a serious dialogue about this ridiculous topic. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Danielle Brigoli returns. With one phrase, this teenager would rocket from obscurity to the heights of memeable infamy. Catch me outside, how about that? Catch you outside? 
What does that mean? However, it was in her return appearance on the show, fresh off her stint at Turnabout Ranch, that Bergoli stood out as the untamable force she is. Far from the contrite success story that Phil might have wished for, Danielle seemed unaltered by her time away from home. We put it this way, y'all could put me in a program for six years and I'm gonna come out the same person I came in. She made it clear that she was not impressed by Phil or his treatment. In fact, by her own estimation, Phil gained more from her than she did from him. Well, I guess what's good for you is I made you just like how Oprah made you. You were nothing before I came on this show. Thank you for that. The doc had to concede that you just can't win some battles. As for Brigoli, we have to admit, she does seem to have a strong sense of herself, if nothing else. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.